Hello friends and family. Welcome to the Sunday edition of our boring meditation stuff. I wanted to address an idea that I've uh, heard from a particular Twitter personality. He's a bit vocal about his meditation practice. I don't think there's any harm in that. Um, uh, clearly, <laughs> since that's what I'm doing. Um, but he espouses an idea that the purpose of meditation is to kind of, um, how to say this, work through your stuff and to get to inbox zero. Um, so thoughts are coming up, thoughts are coming up, thoughts are coming up, and that sooner or later, if you sit there long enough, maybe one or two hours a day, that they stop coming and then you'll experience something else. Um, there are arguments to be made for this line of thinking in terms of um, there's a specific category of, uh, uh, let's say, philosophy or metaphysics corresponding to a set of things known as the jhanas, um, absorptions. And um, this relates, and it's not invalid. But this is not the goal of meditation, not the goal of serious meditation, it is not to reach inbox zero. It is not to clear yourself of thoughts and worries. Um, that's, a, that's a nice side effect of serious meditation, is to be free of annoying or distracting thoughts, um, but that is not the purpose. The purpose of serious meditation is to come out of negative habit patterns and being free of distracting thoughts certainly helps with that, but the idea is that there are certain things that we do that we don't seem to really entirely understand why we do. Behaviors we exhibit, things we say, and even things that we think, which are unproductive, counterproductive, um, conducive to negativity around us. and at least within the scope of anapana meditation and vipassana meditation, the idea is that there is a way to unwind these, that we can break away uh, from these habits and that we can find a healthier way to live. Um, not so much as an alternative, but actually by kind of destroying these habits in ourselves. And the alternative to the habits is described as a natural way of living. The natural way of living is inherently positive and healthy. Um, there seems to be some truth in that. I'm far too much a beginner uh, in the field of meditation to know how much truth there is to that, but um, it certainly seems to be the case. And from theory or practice, both, um, this is definitely understood to be the purpose of serious meditation. Not to clear a mind of thoughts, not to reach inbox zero, but to, uh, to use a fairly strong word, to purify the mind. So um, if it's water that we've extracted from a river, say, that if there are pollutants, um, if there's effluent in the water, that we want to clean that out make the water drinkable. Um, 
and the same for our thoughts and our speech and our actions that there should be a way to do that at the root at the kind of the core of our being not just to read a book about positive habits or some other self-help thing um, which may work on the surface but those thoughts and words and actions that seem to emerge from us and we don't really know where they've come from why did i get so angry why am i getting so sad about this um, that we don't understand the origin of those things that we can find the origin and that we can do the work there instead rather than working on the surface of the mind to work through this kind of exercise of conscious external self-improvement what we can do is sort of fix the, uh, the internal machinery of the mind as it were um, it should be understood that this is a very long process um, neuroplasticity is understood a little better with each passing decade but we don't really know clearly in the scientific realms exactly what is the scope of neuroplasticity how much can we change our own nervous system and brain with our own actions with our own practices um, and when we look at those who have really dedicated a lot of time to the sorts of practices that we're talking about here so monks who live for decades in caves yes yeah, certainly their their minds have changed they are healthier they have very different brain waves um, but to understand the process of how they got there is, is still a bit far away for us and so I would encourage <laughs> I would encourage us not to um, to take this idea too seriously initially this idea that oh I'm changing all my habits I'm going to no more angry Stephen <laughs> I I'm going to completely rewire my brain and I'll be a saintly friendly loving person no it doesn't it doesn't happen overnight it doesn't happen in a matter of years um, but incrementally that's what we're working toward and of course by contrast not in box zero i hope that's helpful to someone and i hope that everyone's taking good care of themselves and taking good care of the people around them i will talk to you all tomorrow Goodbye.